Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of WHF Talks, um, which is a special edition for COP26. And I am joined by uh, Mr. Axel von Trostenberg, Managing Director of Operations at World Bank. Hello. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to have you here with us today. Uh, I know you're busy, so let me start with my first question. Uh, climate change, poverty and inequalities are the defining issues of our age, unfortunately, and humanity is in cold red. Uh, the World Bank Group is the biggest multilateral funder of climate investments in developing countries. Uh, what do you look to showcase of your work in this COP26 and what makes this COP different than others? Well, it, we start with uh, the more human side. Uh, we have been now through a, a terrible pandemic. Hopefully, we see the end of it. And this is the first time that we again meet together. So I think it is an absolute pleasure to see people in person. Yourself, we have talked by WebEx. I think it's so much better to do it live. But more seriously, it gives an, a, a different a different dimension again of connectivity and, and that is what it's all about is uh, as you said that uh, the climate crisis is massive and we will need to to pull together as humanity and that means also you need that connectivity not on a distance but closer so i think this context uh, was very important the second thing is that as this crisis particularly with the pandemic has shown is how fragile the world is uh, how interconnected we are and how badly those who are um, at the bottom uh, are disproportionately affected. You see, we have estimated right now that this pandemic is creating 100 million more extreme poor. We have also estimated that the climate crisis, if we are continue as business as usual, you see at the end of the decade, 130 million people more in extreme poverty as a result of the climate crisis. So the question you are putting is very important, is that you don't discuss climate change in an isolation, but you need to put that in conjunction with the development agenda and inclusiveness. Because if you don't include everybody, all the continents, then you are going to create also greater inequalities and greater problems. So it is, uh, it is not, unquote, a technical problem or a little financial problem. It's much more complex. And at the center is how we connect as mankind. That, that's amazing, Gabe. It's important that you emphasize the importance of uh, engagement from different uh, organizations and also you know different uh, groups of people women young people in the indigenous communities it is important definitely to have them engaged into this conversation and i think with the pandemic we have seen the importance of being together um, so it is it is definitely much needed uh, at the World Bank, um, you talk about the importance of reaching out to poorest and uh, working in fragile contexts. Uh, how do you do this? Uh, and also, let me add another question just uh, on the tail of that. COP26 is about also uh, focusing on mobilizing finance around uh, climate change and uh, creating resilience. How do you make this possible for the poorest and the most fragile uh, situations? Um. Knowingly or not knowingly, you are posing one of the most important uh, questions also for this COP, as well as elsewhere. There's a lot of talk. At the end of the day, people desperately not only want answers, but they want to have also some hope that actually that what is promised is being delivered. I think there we are in deficit, that there is a lot of the declarations on this. Um, Yesterday, the Indonesian finance minister, Sri Mulyani, when she heard all the trillions, she said, just give me the billions and I want the real money. And the point she was actually making is, you can get completely distracted by these uh, uh, dimensions and you don't know anymore whether this is real or not. For the poorest countries, this is a special responsibility for everybody 
is they have been hurt, left behind, marginalized so often that I think we need to be aware of our special responsibilities that if we promise something, you deliver. For us, this is through our Fund for the Poorest, that is the International Development Association, IDA, where we have been uh, delivering over 60 years uh, uh, the necessary concessional resources, including grants, to the poorest. Interesting thing is over the last 20 years, we have shifted these operations increasingly to Africa. Now over two thirds of those resources go there. And last year, only in Africa during a crisis, we delivered 30 billion of which 10 billion is in grants. And more needs to be done. I think that this is what I'm always calling is, we need as an organization to go the extra mile. Uh, I consider us incredibly privileged. So if you cannot be aware of that uh, privilege, it, uh, it, that is, that should give uh, a positive thought that you, that you actually need to reflect on that and you need to act. And that's what we are doing. We have been uh, scaling up our support to the poor. In, in fact, the entire World Bank group has increased its program by almost two thirds. We delivered in a 15 month period, is the whole group 157 billion. And particularly in social protection programs, and about 40% was crisis related. And I think we still need to continue to do that. We're now fundraising uh, again for, the, uh, for that fund for IDA. And hopefully in December, we will have our last pledging session. Our ambition is right now to go to, for three years to an amount of 95 to, I think 95, some people would like to go to $100 billion. But the need, is, so you say that's impressive, and it's an impressive amount, but the needs are enormous. So we need to, 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 to be on there. What I often say to people, look at cumulative additionality. We need making additional effort, and if the World Bank does something addition, then not a donor or another organization should feel tempted. I can now do less. It needs to add up. This is for the whole poverty agenda. It's the same for the uh, climate change agenda. This needs to add up to additional things. And uh, sometimes at conferences, including like this, sometimes people like to point to somebody else to do more and forgetting that one well, maybe should look to oneself and then say, what can I do more? And I think here the bank has been very clear also with the climate that uh, we are wanting to scale this up and we would like to provide financing of about 125 billion over the next five years in climate, be it on the mitigation agenda or, or the uh, adaptation. We want to keep that in a balance. Very inspiring numbers, to be honest, and we just hope that these will be uh, achievable. Uh, they will be delivered. I promise you. Okay, we get the promise here. It's, on it's the not only the promise. <laughs> I think the good thing is we as an international organization are subject also to constant monitoring our board members, but it is not a convincing to do. We have here fairly highly motivated people that know that this is a mission, this is not a job. And so therefore, I, I think that people uh, are working 24-7 uh, to make this happen. And one thing I uh, am quite confident is we can do this and we will do that. So trust me. And you can gladly ask me next year okay, whether fantastic. we are on track. Fantastic. We, we, I will keep this on record. Please do so. <laughs> Uh, last week we have seen G20 taking place and now we are at COP26. Uh, what have been your key takeaways from G20 to COP26? 
Well, uh, going back to the development agenda, I think there is a recognition that there has been a, 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 a global recovery that is unfortunately uneven. Meaning in the industrialized countries, there is a fairly strong recovery, on average 5%. But for the low-income countries, the recovery is, is much weaker. It's only 0.5%. That means that actually inequality uh, is increasing. And we should keep that by. So that's one thing is we need to have uh, probably a more even-handed recovery and we shall keep our focus on the low-income countries. Second uh, issue is that the recovery will only be then a success once we have the pandemic under control. And I think this year we have made good progress in many areas of the vaccination rollout. But, and the but is big and bold, is that Africa has been essentially left behind. And it's a totally unacceptable proposition. It is unfair. It is completely inconsistent with a global strategy. The goal of reaching 40% uh, of world population by the end of this year will not be achieved because of this. And I think that is a pity. I think there are ways forward. We have been providing a lot of the financing. So financing is not the problem. It is really to get the vaccines and those vaccines are being released by industrialized countries. And our appeal constantly is please release larger doses that may have been committed already, but in the industrialized countries, the stocks are often a multiple of the popu their populations. So I think one can actually go the extra mile and provide those critically needed vaccines to those countries that are still uh, far behind in the vaccination campaigns. And the third takeaway is certainly climate change, where heads of states were already looking forward to uh, the uh, COP26 here in Glasgow. Um, I think there were already some indications, well, first of all, of urgency, but also uh, an indication that one could make further progress in areas like deforestation, the coal exit, and you saw already some of those announcements being made. So in all in all, I think uh, there was a, a good warming up session already for COP. And at the end of the day, for, for all people is that what is being announced needs now to be translated into concrete programs. Exactly. And uh, this is how I recall. We can't to tolerate inaction, really. We need action and movement to go in the ground. Um, WHF's theme for COP26 is five Ps. I know it's a bit a lot, <laughs> five Ps, um, but it is people, uh, planet, prosperity, peace and partnerships. Uh, and it's the framework used for defining SDGs. What would be your remarks on this theme? I have, uh, you know, this captures this is, I, um, you know, I think this is, uh, this is powerful, but it is only then powerful if you fulfill it with life. And I think you need uh, uh, to add another P, passion. You need to be passionate for this. If you're not passionate, this, you will not make the change. And I've always believed in the development area, but also difficult areas, uh, you got to come with an, a good dose of passion because that is what is needed and that makes the human difference that you connect and you drive these agendas forward. That's amazing. Very powerful message. And that brings me to another and final question, Promise. What is your uh, message to young generations who would probably listen to this interview after five, ten years' time? Push the envelope. Be bold. Uh, don't censor yourself. I think go for that uh, and, and put the energy, uh, uh, drive your, uh, your actions by conviction 
and 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 there don't compromise. Um, uh, maybe I'm, I'm I've been outspoken in my life, so I've sometimes <laughs> felt that. Uh, but I think it is um, if you state honestly your view and you are passionate about this and 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 convinced of it. What is very, very clearly is we mo have to mobilize the next generation to 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 really take this on. Uh, uh, I think. Uh, one needs to trust uh, the younger uh, generation a lot. I think they can move mountains. And with that energy, I think you could make far more pro progress. And I think uh, we should build on that. That's usually, I, I find, uh, I'm telling that always young professionals, when they come to the, to the go with your passion for, you know, really make it happen and don't censure yourself. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you very much. It was a great pleasure to have you with us today. As usual. Thank you. Thank you.